These are unprecedented times. It's the new normal. No more business as usual. It's okay. We're all in this together. As I searched my brain for something inspiring to say to you, the COVID cliches fogged my brain. It's easy to turn to such phases. They seem soothing during complex and scary times. It's the verbal equivalent of eating potato chips when you're stressed. It keeps the hunger at bay for a little while, but it's not very nourishing. By the way, we have our own Williams cliches too. We use a word like community, or we talk about looking out for each other. But which community? And who is each other? Too often, it turns out we define these things very differently depending on who we are. In short, cliches can obscure reality, even when they seem to distill it. So as I tried to plan today's message to you, I realized that my true wish for you all is sincerity, not cliches or trite phrases, but authenticity. And I thought one way to get there might be to shake up some of these cliches that I mentioned earlier to see what falls out. Here we go. First, these are not unprecedented times. Consider a child living in the United States in 1900. By the time they were your age, they had seen both the suffragette movement and Jim Crow, the rise of nations in Europe, and the Russian Revolution the continued colonization of Africa and much of Asia. Native Americans were being dispossessed and killed. A president was assassinated, the second in a few decades. There was a world war and an epidemic that killed tens of millions, but also life-saving medical discoveries. By the time that same person was 40 or roughly twice your age, They'd seen the Habsburg and Ottoman empires collapse and the British empire start to unravel. They made it through the Great Depression and then witnessed the rise of labor unions and the invention of the weekend. They went from riding in horse-drawn carriages to automobiles and airplanes. They witnessed the spread of fascism and another world war. It was a time that saw both lynchings and the activism of Pullman porters. By the time that person was 80, they'd lived through the Cold War and the threat of nuclear destruction, another presidential assassination, a technological revolution, and the rise of liberation movements among women, black people, American Indians, Chicanos, gay and lesbian people, disabled people, farm workers, and many others. In one lifetime, they saw both havoc and the possibilities of freedom. We must not allow ourselves to think that what we're seeing has never been seen before. This global pandemic, as devastating as it is, is embedded in longer histories of global challenge and illness. The racism that's so invisible in the United States today has been embedded in this society for centuries. To call this moment unprecedented would deprive us of the chance to learn from the precedented full past, from our triumphs and from our traumas. Studying how others endured hard times and reached for something better helps us understand the great extent of our own resilience and take on our own challenges. The second cliche is that we're living in a new normal. No, we're not. This isn't normal. Let's not allow ourselves to think that it is. Yes, we'll have to make adjustments. We're going to wear masks in public, and we're going to practice social distancing. But adaptation isn't the same as surrender. We can adjust and still struggle. The pandemic and systemic racism are enormous challenges, but we need to resist their normalization. Instead, keep struggling against them. We can do this by caring for each other and aiding the search for a vaccine, by fighting voter suppression and protecting the rights and voices of the disempowered. None of us can predict with certainty how we'll get through our current trials. All I can tell you is that it will not always be this way. Everything you do will shape the future. I implore you to reflect on that power and to learn how to use it well. And then there's the third cliche. We're all in this together. This one's more of a maybe. Sometimes we are. 
and sometimes we aren't. But as Brian Stevenson counseled us when he was here a few years ago, seek allies, even imperfect ones. We are all imperfect allies. No two humans have perfectly matching hopes and dreams, fears, needs, or cares. That diversity is the beauty of humanity. But it also means that even the closest of soulmates will sometimes disagree. If we reify those disagreements by treating them as tragically unsolvable, then we're not in this together. We are each in this alone. I don't know about you, but I can't bear that thought. Love matters. Care matters. Hope matters. We have too much we need to do for each other and too much we need to do for ourselves. And we can't accomplish that alone. So there's probably some truth in this third cliche. We have to all be in this together, even as we accept that to do so, we'll have to respect and bridge what sometimes feels like unbridgeable differences. Fortunately, Williams has readied you to get there. As seniors, you have a year ahead of you to continue training your mind and preparing your spirit. I'm no Pollyanna, but I do believe in hope. For every person lost to COVID or brutality, a hundred more are claiming their voices and their right to breathe. You too, as students and citizens of Williams and members of the human race, will claim your voices, your hope, and even in these dark times, your joy. And you have to use these gifts to defend each other's voices and breath and joys. When we do, I believe your generation can move us down a bright and promising road. And you, Williams seniors, whom I care about so very much, if you use your gifts wisely, you will lead the way.